Welcome learners, I am Dr. Nidhi Singh, Assistant Professor. In this session, we are going to learn about nature of geography as a discipline. So, in this session, we will be learning about how to describe nature of geography as a subject and its importance. Second, to understand its basic concepts. Third, to know technical terms which are building blocks of geographical knowledge. So, what is geography basically? Geography is one of the oldest earth sciences and it roots date back to works of early Greek geographers. Uh, the word geography was first used by Eratosthenes who himself was a Greek scholar in the 3rd century BC. So, geography is composed of two words, one is geo that means earth and uh, graphy that means to describe. So, geography in totality means to describe about the earth's surface. Now, if we look into what is the, what, what do we study in geography? So, geography is basically to know a few questions that is uh, who gets what, where, how and why. So, the questions like who, what, where, how and why are related to human and natural activities that occur on the earth's surface and how they are interconnected with each other. So, in geography, we learn about all these questions and their interconnections. So, the study of geography has been changing, its approach has been changing since, since the time it was coined, the word was coined. Earlier, it was more of qualitative approach, now it is more of quantitative, humanistic and many others which will be dealing it uh, later. Now, how is geography related to our life? We live in an environment and the way we use it both has an interconnection with each other. So, there is an environment where we live and then the way we use it. So, there is a continuous interaction between the way we live and the way we use the environment. Due to this interaction, there is a pattern that emerges and we have to observe these patterns and this observation of patterns is the study of geography. So, uh, geography in a simple manner is the study of the patterns that emerge on the earth's surface with the interaction of human beings, natural aspects of the earth and everything. So, other aspects of geography uh, include factors behind aerial differentiation. Secondly, how social, cultural, economic and demographic factors change our physical landscape. And thirdly, uh, to create new landscape by human beings or alter the landscape, how human beings alter the landscapes that are generated because of physical aspects. So, geography is not only about making maps and studying them, but it includes so many things that is happening on the earth's surface. So, uh, for example, if we see uh, food security, again their geography is involved, health, effective energy use and environmental conservation everywhere geography is involved. When we talk about equality issues and sustainable development, then again geography is there. And uh, so, geography investigates what is where on the earth and why it is there. Now, development of geography, how the de geography developed from what it was in 3rd century BC and now what it is right now. So, geography has been defined differently to different periods of history during ancient time. Uh, for example, uh, there were Greek geographers and Greek geographers were the earliest geographers. The names can be uh, stated as Homer, Herodotus, Thales, Aristotle and Eratosthenes. So, the development of geography during this time was mainly in the field of cartography, physical geography and astronomical geography. Secondly, the pre-modern period. It can be extended from 15th century, mid 15th century BC to earlier 18th century. The, during this period, lots of travels and explorations uh, were there. It, all these travels and explorations provided enormous information about physical and cultural nature of the world. The famous explorers of this time were Christopher Columbus, Vasco da Gama, Ferdinand Magellan and Thomas Cook. Uh, some of the geographers that uh, per se during this period were uh, Verinius, Kant, Humboldt and Ritter who led the geographers of this period. So, during this period the development of geography was mainly in the field of cartography, discovering new lands and scientific geography. Then comes the modern period, thirdly the modern period. 
it can be started uh, during the time of later 19th century. Ritter and Humboldt were the main two geographers that can be uh, uh, identified during this period. These two are considered as the founders of modern geography. Radzel, another geographer during this time, uh, built structure of modern geography. Then fourth is the recent period. This period can be stated from the post World War II period. American and European geographers were there during this period who were famous uh, geographers of their time and Hartshorn was one of the most eminent geographers of this period and he talked about aerial differen differentiation and now we have so many things, uh, regional geography and all these based on these uh, aerial differentiation. So what is the scope of geography? So uh, can you think of any scope of geography? So geography has lots of scope in different uh, fields because it is a science that explains the arrangements of various natural and cultural features on the earth's surface, right? So it is a holistic and interdisciplinary field of study. So the scope is from armed services to environmental management to water resources, disaster management, meteorology and planning and various social sciences. Other fields uh, uh, where there is a scope of geography uh, are tourism, commuting, housing and health related activities. This was all about the scope of geography. Now uh, we have approaches of geography. So what are the approaches that are mainly followed in geography? So this is the only discipline where natural and human sciences come at a common platform to understand dynamics of spatial configuration of the earth surface. There are two main approaches to study all these things. One is the systematic approach and second one is the regional approach. In systematic approach, basically the thing is that we study one aspect across all the places. For example, uh, if we are studying population, then we will be studying about population of all over the world or country or whatever area of study that we have. So it is study of specific natural or human phenomenon with certain spatial patterns and structures on the earth's surface. The sub-branches of systematic geography are physical geography, biogeography including environmental geography, human geography and fourth one is geographical methods and techniques. Now the second one as I talked about uh, was regional approach. So in this in regional approach we have defined regions and then we study approaches according to the regions. So what are regions? Regions are based on a single factor like relief rainfall, vegetation, per capita income, etc. There can be also multi-factor regions where two or more factors are included while studying. Administrative units like states, districts, tehsils can also be coined as regions. The sub-branches of uh, regional approach are first regional studies, second regional analysis, third is regional planning and fourth is regional development. So uh, now one can think about how geography is related to our society. So when we are dealing with uh, the natural resources, when we are dealing or the natural aspects and, uh, or when we are dealing with the uh, human aspect, then naturally geography comes into it. Uh, when one has to plan for the urban area, uh, one has to plan for a rural area, target group approach, target area approach, everywhere geography comes into existence. So uh, when urban master plans or rural development strategies are to be coined, it is important to understand the physical structure, climatic conditions and availability of resources. So all these are in included in the study of geography. Secondly, when decisions are, have to be made to shift industries from city areas to uh, nearby areas, then the land use pattern is studied and here also geography comes into existence. Now, what are the methods and techniques of geography? So, what methods we follow, what techniques we follow to study geography? The first method or technique is cartography. Cartography is the study and practice of making maps and diagrams. It represents earth with maps and abstract symbols. So, traditionally cartography was done with the help of using pen, paper and ink. But now since computers are there and very advanced computers are there, it has re revolutionized cartography and with GIS methods, 
GIS means geographical information system. So for with GIS systems, we have maps and diagrams with greater choice and efficiency. Now commercial quality maps are also there which use softwares, highly uh, efficient softwares for making maps and they are used for commercial uh, purposes. What are the main types of uh, maps and cartography th that is being used these days. One is computer aided data management that is CAD, geographical information system that is GIS and global positioning systems that is GPS. So with the uh, help of all three th these three things uh, cartography is performed these days. Now the second uh, method is quantitative method. Here numerical methods are mostly used and they are uh, widely used in geography these days. Uh, for some of the examples are spatial analysis and cluster analysis etc. And uh, these are useful in finding patterns and identifying relationship between space and activities. All the relationships are found out by using quantitative methods these days. Now the third one is regional science. It emerged during 1950s when the regional science movement arose and it was started by Walter Izard. More quantitative and analytical base to geographical questions than qualitative trends are evident now in geography. That means more of quantitative analysis is done. Qualitative, qualitative aspects are also there. Uh, they supplement the quantitative or uh, in a way both of them supplement and complement each other. So quant qualitative is also used these days but quantitative techniques are used on wide uh, scale and with regional approach uh, definitely. So the re in regional development we study resource management, uh, location theory, urban and regional planning, transportation and communication, human geography, population distribution, landscape ecology and environmental quality all these things are examined with the help of regional science. So one thinks about that uh, any one technique is used so that is not the case all the techniques are used interchangeably wherever the need is there. So cartography is also used for making maps and studying for analyzing and quantitative as well as qualitative techniques are used for uh, analysis purpose, for planning purpose, for uh, uh, pro program formation and then regional science definitely is used while uh, on a regional basis things are studied uh, all the aspects are studied. So what are the branches of geography? Geography mainly has three important branches with its sub branches. So first the most important and the first one is physical geography. In physical geography we study all the physical aspects on the earth surface and it includes the sub or the sub branches are astronomical geography, geomorphology, climatology, oceanography, soil geography and biogeography. These are all physical aspects, uh, branches of geography. Human branch of geography includes anthropogeography, cultural geography, economic geography, political geography, historical geography, social geography, population geography and settlement geography. So all these uh, sub themes include what do we, uh, what we can decipher from that, that all these are uh, related to human aspects. And the last one or the third one is the regional branch where we study various aspects depending upon the region. So regions are coined and then we study various aspects uh, related to it. With all these things uh, you must have understood that geography is not very uh, social uh, science or not very uh, science. So uh, geography is basically an interdisciplinary subject which has strong relationships with mathematics natural sciences and social sciences as well. It studies various phenomena in integrated manner as a synthesis. What is synthesis? Synthesis is combination of components or elements to form a connected whole. So everything is taken together it in a synthesis manner. So they uh, complement, supplement each other and they uh, uh, act as a whole. Nature of geography as a discipline has uh, systematic science, systematic geography, then there are several branches, uh, physical, uh, human, regional and all those things are uh, ch uh, churned out together or studied together as you can see in the diagram that uh, which was given by uh, Hetner and Hartshorn and their concept. So it is uh, all about uh, landforms, soils, 
seas and oceans, vegetation, uh, racial geography, economic geography, botany, physiology, economics, political science, everything is uh, uh, interconnected in a single platform that is geography. So, uh, now learners we know that geography is not only about making maps and studying it, but also about uh, uh, how human as well as physical aspects are uh, existing on the earth surface, what is the pattern that they follow and then we see the interconnected or relationship uh, between them and as a on a whole as it, it is a disciplinary interdisciplinary subject and we study geography as a synthesis as a whole and uh, all the aspects are related to each other in this manner. Thank you. I hope you have under you must have understood what is geography, what is all about, what are the technical terms of geography, how we study geography, what are the techniques used in it. Thank you. पच्चीस साल का लंबा सफर और लाखों लोगों के चेहरों पर खेलती मुस्कान गर्व और गरिमा से जीने की प्रेरणा देती मुस्कान आत्मसम्मान और विश्वास से पैदा हुई मुस्कान इन खिलते चेहरों पर ये मुस्कान आई है शिक्षा के जरिए ये मुस्कान आई है नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ ओपन स्कूलिंग यानी एन के जरिए नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ ओपन स्कूलिंग या राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विद्यालयी शिक्षा संस्थान इस संस्थान का एक बड़ा उद्देश्य है आम आदमियों के जीवन को बेहतर बनाना ऐसे लोग जिनके लिए शिक्षा एक दूर का सपना है या वे बच्चे जो परिवार की रोजी रोटी कमाने के लिए बीच में ही स्कूल छोड़ने पर मजबूर हो जाते हैं एन ऐसे बच्चों और बड़ों को दोबारा शिक्षा से जुड़ने का मौका मुहैया कराता है ताकि वे एक बेहतर जीवन जी सके उन्नीस में स्थापना के बाद एन ने देश के लाखों बच्चों और वयस्कों को बेहतर शिक्षा से जोड़ा है इनमें हर उम्र हर पृष्ठभूमि हर जाति हर मजहब और हर क्षेत्र के लड़के लड़कियां, महिलाएं और पुरुष शामिल हैं बड़ई से लेकर पायलट डॉक्टर इंजीनियर बेकर और दर्जी तक एन कोशिश कर रहा है सबको शिक्षित और सशक्त बनाने की चाहे वो असम के दूर दराज इलाके में रहने वाला हो या फिर मुंबई जैसे महानगर का एन ने अपनी मौजूदगी हर जगह दर्ज कराई है एन ने शिक्षा की परंपरागत सोच को ही बदल दिया है वो पढ़िए जो हम पढ़ाते हैं की जगह एन की नई सोच है हम वो पढ़ाते हैं जो आप पढ़ना चाहते हैं इस नई सोच ने लोगों को आगे बढ़ने और एन के साथ जुड़ने के लिए प्रोत्साहित किया है शिक्षा उपलब्ध कराने के मामले में एन किसी सीमा को नहीं मानता उम्र की सीमा को भी नहीं चंडीगढ़ के गणेश के लिए भी एन एक वरदान साबित हुआ एन शारीरिक रूप से अक्षम बच्चों को भी बेहतर शिक्षा मुहैया कराने के लिए पूरी तरह प्रतिबद्ध है ऐसे बच्चों के लिए शिक्षा न केवल रोजगार के द्वार खोलती है बल्कि उन्हें आत्मविश्वास और गर्व के साथ जीना भी सिखाती है एन खेल के इन सितारों को उनकी सुविधा और समय के अनुसार बेहतर शिक्षा उपलब्ध कराता है मेरी कॉम सोमदेव देवर्मन देविका रिबेका पल्लिकल अरमान इब्राहिम प्रद्युमन प्रकाश और अमय ज्योत सिंह एन सीमा पर खड़े उन प्रहरियों को भी शिक्षा से लाभान्वित करता है जो देश की सुरक्षा के लिए अपनी जान की बाजी लगाने से भी नहीं चूकते सच तो ये है कि एन की पहुंच हर ओर रहती है चाहे वो दूर दराज के आदिवासी हो या जेल की कोठरी में बंद कैदी या फिर ग्रामीण और शहरी क्षेत्रों के गरीब निवासी 
देश में कहीं भी कोई भी व्यक्ति स्त्री पुरुष लड़का लड़की अमीर गरीब शिक्षा से वंचित न रहे राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विद्यालय शिक्षा संस्थान का यही मिशन है राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विद्यालय शिक्षा संस्थान पूरे देश में शिक्षा के साथ साथ कौशल विकास के क्षेत्र में बहुत सारे कोर्सेज दे रहा है लगभग सौ से ज्यादा कोर्सेज है हम दूर दराज के गाँव में अपने संस्थान बनाते हैं और वहाँ के बच्चों को वहाँ के बच्चियों को वहाँ के वयस्कों को हुनर के क्षेत्र में शिक्षा पहुँचाते हैं आपको जानकर खुशी होगी कि अब हम आर्ट साइंस कॉमर्स जिन क्षेत्रों में बारहवीं का सर्टिफिकेट दिया जाता रहा है अब हम हुनर के क्षेत्र में वोकेशनल एरिया में भी दसवीं और बारहवीं का सर्टिफिकेशन करेंगे तो वो बच्चे जो कृषि से जुड़े हुए हैं कारपेंट्री से जुड़े हुए हैं या दूसरे क्षेत्रों से जुड़े हुए हैं वो अपने ही क्षेत्र में काम करेंगे सीखेंगे हुनर पैदा करेंगे अपने में और सर्टिफाइड भी होंगे कि वो सर्टिफाइड कृषक हैं खेतियर हैं तो आज तक जो हमारे देश में ये सोच रही है कि आप बारहवीं पास तभी कहे जाएंगे जब भूगोल अर्थशास्त्र भौतिकी ये पढ़ेंगे अब ये समय बदल गया है आई में जितने बच्चे पढ़ते हैं लगभग 18 लाख बच्चे हर साल दाखिला लेते हैं अब हम उनको सर्टिफिकेशन करेंगे एन अपने छात्रों को माध्यमिक स्तर पर 26 और उच्च माध्यमिक स्तर पर 19 विषयों का विकल्प देता है पढ़ाई किस माध्यम से करनी है इसमें भी आपको लचीलापन मिलेगा माध्यमिक स्तर पर ही सात भाषाओं के अलग अलग माध्यमों का विकल्प मौजूद है शैक्षणिक कार्यक्रमों के अलावा छियासी वोकेशनल शिक्षा कार्यक्रम भी उपलब्ध हैं, जो छात्रों को कामकाजी दुनिया के लिए तैयार करते हैं वोकेशनल प्रशिक्षण को अधिक सुदृढ़ बनाने के लिए एन ने आई सिस्को इंडियन मेडिकल एसोसिएशन जैसे कई सरकारी और गैर सरकारी संस्थानों के साथ भागीदारी स्थापित की है आज लाखों छात्रों के लिए अपनी पसंद का स्कूल है राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विद्यालयी शिक्षा संस्थान यानी नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ ओपन स्कूलिंग एन ने एक लंबा सफर तय किया है लेकिन मंजिल अभी दूर है निरंतर विकास और नवीनीकरण के लिए एन सदैव प्रतिबद्ध है शिक्षा का उद्देश्य महज रोजगार जुटाना ही नहीं है बल्कि स्वयं को सशक्त बनाना भी है एन लाखों छात्रों के लिए यही आत्मसम्मान दिलाने में जुटा है लाखों लोगों के लिए एक आशा और उम्मीद है नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ ओपन स्कूलिंग शिक्षा सबके लिए कहीं भी कभी भी घर बैठे पाए राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विद्यालय शिक्षा संस्थान यानी एन में एडमिशन वो भी एकदम आसान तरीके से जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को होगी समय और धन दोनों की बचत एन से शिक्षा कभी भी कहीं भी शिक्षार्थियों क्या आप जानते हैं एन में एडमिशन लेने का सरल और सुगम तरीका जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को ऑनलाइन प्रवेश देने में सहूलियत मिलती है एन में प्रवेश की प्रक्रिया पूर्णतया ऑनलाइन है शिक्षार्थी घर बैठे इंटरनेट द्वारा प्रवेश के लिए सबसे पहले एन की वेबसाइट www.nios.ac.in पर लॉगिन करें अपना ईमेल आईडी और पासवर्ड डालकर अपना पंजीकरण करें पंजीकरण के बाद लॉगिन करने पर ऑनलाइन प्रवेश हेतु आवेदन पत्र खुलेगा आवेदन पत्र को निर्देशानुसार भरें और प्रिंट आउट ले इस प्रिंट आउट पर अपनी फोटो संलग्न करें 
ऑनलाइन प्रवेश के लिए शुल्क हेतु भुगतान के तरीके हैं क्रेडिट कार्ड के द्वारा डेबिट कार्ड के द्वारा राष्ट्रकृत बैंक के ड्राफ्ट के माध्यम से, जो कि सचिव एन नई दिल्ली या नोएडा के पक्ष में देय हो भरे हुए आवेदन पत्र के साथ साथ डिमांड ड्राफ्ट और संलग्न किए जाने वाले दस्तावेज हैं जन्म रजिस्ट्रार के जिला कार्यालय से जारी जन्म प्रमाण पत्र की सत्यापित प्रति जिसमें जन्म तिथि अंकित हो पिछले विद्यालय से प्राप्त विद्यालय छोड़ने का प्रमाण पत्र जिसमें आवेदक की जन्म तिथि लिखी हो प्रवेश फॉर्म का प्रिंट आउट एन के संबद्ध क्षेत्र केंद्रों पर 10 दिनों में पहुंच जाना चाहिए अन्यथा उचित दस्तावेज ना लगे होने पर आवेदन फॉर्म रद्द किया जा सकता है प्रवेश प्रक्रिया की पुष्टि होने के बाद शिक्षार्थियों को परिचय पत्र व अध्ययन सामग्री डाक द्वारा तुरंत पहुंचाई जाती है ऑनलाइन प्रवेश एक बहुत ही सुगम और सुविधाजनक प्रवेश प्रणाली है ऑनलाइन ऑन टाइम फॉर सेफ एंड सिक्योर एडमिशन जीवन ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने हम अपना दीपक स्वयं बने हम अपना रास्ता स्वयं चुने कभी पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय की 